Hello and welcome back to Student Tutorials. In today's tutorial, we're going to be showing you how to use EasySense software in conjunction with the Data Harvest sensors. So when you first open up EasySense in the lab laptops, this is the screen you'll be met with. The version of EasySense that we're using is EasySense 2 and lab laptops should already have this updated. So there are three different kinds of sensors we're going to explore using. We're going to use the force sensor, which has a strain gauge at the end of it. We're going to use the timing plates and we're going to use light gates. So before we can do any of that, what we need to do is connect our VHub device to allow the sensor data to be picked up by EasySense. So you'll see in the top left corner, I have this button that says devices, which is currently red. So what we need to do is click on this and connect to our VHub. So you see in the bottom right here, I'm just turning my VHub on by pressing down the white button and you can either connect by Bluetooth or USB. So you click once to navigate your options and then hold down to select the option you want to use. So for Bluetooth, you do this and initialize it, or for USB, you initialize it and then plug into the bottom. There we go, there's our USB port. So I'm gonna connect to this using Bluetooth. So I'm just gonna go back onto my Bluetooth tab here. And once I've initialized it and refresh on the top left corner, you see it allows me to connect to the VHub. So just make sure you stay on the Bluetooth tab while you're using EasySense or it'll disconnect. So now that we're connected, what we're going to do first is play around with the force sensor. So for the force sensor, you see I've got a video of it on the right here. It's got a strain gauge at the end. We're going to use the graph section. So there are four different kinds of experiments we're going to run. Uh, we're only going to use graph and timing today. So graph for this first sensor. You see I've clicked on it here and this is the screen you're met with. So currently on both axes, it has time. Um, because we haven't connected our force sensor yet. So what we're going to do is go to devices and I'm going to plug my force sensor off camera here onto the first port, 1A, and then reconnect. And you'll see here that it's come up as a force sensor in Newtons. You might have to toggle this on if it's the first time you've connected it. And you'll see now that my left hand axis has now changed to say force rather than time. I can also go to the right here and change it to display readings rather than time. So this will display how many individual readings of data I've taken but I'm just going to do mine in time, in seconds. And you'll see if I click on this live data box, you can also change the units, you can edit the name, you can edit the colour of your line. Like so. Now if I go to the bottom left here, it's cut off my camera, but there are three buttons. First one is setup, so we're going to click on this. You'll see I've got a few more options to customise, so we're going to stay in continuous mode. And you'll see this interval, which shows you how often readings are taken. So 50 milliseconds is perfectly fine for what we're doing. You can select when to start taking readings and you can select when it will stop taking readings. But again, I'm just going to leave it as selected so that I can do a continuous reading here. So to start taking a reading, I'm just going to go to the middle of my bottom buttons and press start. And you'll see here it's now taking sensor data. So I'm just going to play about a bit with the force sensor. I'm just pulling on here to add a bit of force and compressing it. And you'll see it's just oscillating above and below that zero newtons line. And the data series on the right is just telling me how much force I'm applying. And I'm pressing stop here to stop my data. So a few things you'll notice here. The data saves temporarily in the runs section. So you'll see here I've got my first run. It gives me the time that it was taken at. And the interesting thing about this is you can continue to take different runs of data and it will save in this runs section. So if I go to start again and take a new set of data, you see that it looks like it's wiped out the old run. I'm just going to compress this and... Add some force to the end of it, like so, and press stop. And if you go up to the run section now, what you'll see is that both runs have actually been saved. There we go. And if I toggle on run one, I can actually get both of my data sets on the same graph as well. Now, a couple more things you'll notice. We have a calculate and smoothing button in the top tab. Um, EasySense obviously provides you with tools to do this, but we would recommend just exporting your data into a CSV and then doing this in Python as you have a bit more control over what you're doing. Also, if you want to save your files, you can go into your file section. Uh, if you press save as, it's going to save it as an EasySense file. So this just allows you to open it back up into EasySense and manipulate the data there. Or if you go to file and then export CSV, that's obviously just going to export it as a CSV file, which you can import into Python. So I'm just saving these on my desktop like so. And if you go into file, you also see here that there's options to import files and to open files. And that's what you do if you want to reopen something in EasySense that you saved before. So I'm just going to go into my desktop to show you what the save files look like. Firstly, just the EasySense file. If I open it up, you'll see I've now got two identical data sets as I have the one that I've saved and the one we're currently working on. 
And then if I go into my CSV, you'll see that I've got a table of both runs against time. So again, you can use this within Python to manipulate your data. So that's everything we want to do with our force sensor. Nice and simple. I'm just gonna bend this data. And now we're going to go on to use our timing plate and our light gates. So for these pieces of apparatus, we're going to use the timing experiment. So if you click on this, this is the screen you're gonna be met with. And it's very important that when you're plugging in your pieces of apparatus, you put them into the correct port. So you'll notice on your rehub that you've got an A port and a B port. And I'll explain why this is important in a second. Um, currently you can see on the axis, you've got time on the left and you've got readings at the bottom. So it's gonna take individual readings. You can change it to be time on the bottom axis, but I'm just gonna leave it as reading for what we're doing. So if we go into setup in our bottom left, you'll see here that it's a bit different to when you're using the graphing tool. So if you click on timing mode, you see there's a few things we can record. We're mainly gonna use time and speed and velocity. So firstly, I'm gonna go through the time options. If you go down to this where tab, you'll see that there's five different options of timings. So we firstly have at A, so this occurs, it'll start timing when the ball enters the light gate and it'll stop timing when it exits. At A or B does the same thing, but it will take data for A when it goes to the light gate A and then take data for B when it goes to the light gate B. From A to B, just starts timing when it enters object A, a light gate here, and ends timing when it hits object B, which is our time pad, as you can see in that clip. We've got at A then B, so this does it all combined. So it'll take a time that it takes to go through light gate A, time it takes to go through light gate B, and then time from A to B, all in the one reading. And then from A to A, this starts the timer when the ball goes through the light gate, and then it will end the timer when it returns back through the same light gate. So this is used for when balls are bouncing off walls, etc., etc. So that's your timing modes. For speed and velocity, you have a few more measurements to put in. So at A, this is how you get your instantaneous speed and velocity. So you'll see there's a few different apparatus. The single interrupt is what we'd be using if we had a steel ball bearing. So here you just put in the diameter of your ball bearing and then it would obviously time it and calculate your instantaneous velocity from that. And then to get your average speeds, we're gonna be going from A to B in our speed and velocity mode. So this would be like if you have two light gates, one at A, one at B, you would put in the distance between the two light gates and then EasySense will time it and give you a velocity based on that. So to give you an example of how the timing mode works, I'm going to choose from A to B in my setup here. In the timing mode. Just like so. Uh, and I'm going to do the timing it takes from A, which is going to be my light gate, to B, which is going to be my timing pads. So you'll see here, I've just connected up my light gate into port A, as you can see. And then the cream wire is my timing plate, which is off camera. So to make sure these sensors are connected, I'm going back into my top green button and I'm just gonna refresh my sensors to make sure that they are linked in with my V-Hub. There we go. And now my light gate and my timing plate are both connected. So you'll see that it's ready for reading one to be taken. So I'm just gonna pass my ball through my first light gate and then I'm gonna let it drop onto my timing pad. And once it hits the timing pad, you'll see the data comes up on the graph. So if I just press start here at the bottom left, There we go. So about 0.5 seconds for our ball to go through. And then I'm gonna take a second reading. There we go. And this reading's a bit longer this time, about 1.4 seconds. And so this is the technique we use for all your different kinds of timing. Just make sure that your apparatus is linked correctly in the A and B ports or you will get the wrong information. So that's everything you need to know about using EasySense with our data harvest pieces. Thanks so much for watching.